We have in the studio an aviation consultant, Tayo Ojuri, to talk to us about this. Uh, good morning to you and thank you for joining us. Good good nice morning. to see you. Yeah, yeah, this kind of report, uh, should it even be something Nigerians should be reading with some form of joy in their hearts, really? Is it impressive at all? It's not impressive, but it's good to know. It's good to know in the sense that you know what type of airline. It helps the customer to know what airline they should be buying because it really helps. And it's a global phenomenon. It's done by FCA, FAA. If it's something that helps the passenger to make the, an objective decision. Because if you're looking at an airline that has more cancellation based on data and trend analysis, there's an actuality that that airline would most likely cancel. It's not fair though, because the more aircrafts you have, the tendency you, ha you have, higher tendency you have to cancel. Because what leads to that cancellation? They are all underlying factors actually. There's bad weather, there's uh, issue of infrastructure, there's re uh, security restrictions, whereby when there's presidential movements, we have, everything has to stop. Uh, we just talked about executive here. It's been driven by that as well. And there's what we call the, uh, the delay in turnaround, whereby that aircraft goes to a station, by the time baggage loading, fuel issues, by the time they actually have other issues, ancillary issues, it, it actually affects that aircraft from coming back to returning in, in good time. Mm -hmm. And by the time they even clean that aircraft up, it all affects it. So those are the things that really affect it and okay. makes, makes it uh, an issue. Yeah, but, but if, if we look at it critically, the, the issue of weather, the weather can be, well, it's, it's unpredictable as anyone would say, mm -hmm. but it doesn't happen every time, every single time. The issue of the executive, um, any, when there's any presidential executive activity could, that also doesn't happen every time. Absolutely. But the issue of cleaning up the air, refueling and all of that, all these things are factored because they happen every day. Every aircraft that leaves Lagos for Abuja or for Kaduna or for whatever, you must pass through some of these things. The checks are certainly will happen. Uh, if they are factored into, into uh, the flight schedules before the time for the next flight is fixed, why do we still have delays when you know that if this aircraft leaves uh, um, uh, Lagos, to, to Abuja and then to Meduguri, the you're supposed set. to refuel, mm -hmm. and then you, you, you schedule the time when you're supposed to get there and then leave. Why do we still have delays when I all would these like things are factored in? to be in? very realistic okay. and where the rubber meets the road. Okay. In, uh, interestingly, in the last two weeks, I've had that experience where we boarded an air, it was actually boarded on a Saturday morning, but the ground handling company was loading the baggage, and one of the equipment of the bang, uh, ground handling company damaged the aircraft, you couldn't close the baggage mm -hmm. holding. You can't take off. We call it aircraft on ground. Mm. Now you now have to look for another aircraft or divert another aircraft, which causes delay and that actually affects subsequent flights. So I call it life happens. And in aviation, we have a time that no one day is the same. But should life happen very, very much often? Let's look at the, the airline with the worst uh, record. That's Airpiece. Out of 5,066 uh, flights uh, within that period, about 2,901 flights were delayed and then 59 were cancelled. And if you, if you look at all of this, an employee uh, in one of the airlines told me one time that a flight scheduled for 7 a.m. was eventually, uh, you know, put for takeoff at, I think about 9 p.m. same day. Imagine the long hours the passengers went through and all that. And this, even the reports somehow didn't capture the reasons. Because when you look, they just gave the data, but yes. nothing on the reasons why all those happened and all that. So how do you even make uh, sense of all of this, really? Out of 5,000, 2,900. It's a, it's a huge chunk, and I agree with you. However, we have real issues within the aviation sector. You're, you did mention if we're growing or not. Yes, there's that growth in domestic traffic, but do we have adequate equipment to meet that growth in domestic traffic? There's a challenge with that. We have the uh, NCA policy that mandates air, uh, operating airlines to actually start with five airlines, aircraft, sorry. With that start of five aircraft, the, you find that lots of the airlines want to start so many routes at once. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So being able to grow that route 
and have what you call contingency means. And what doesn't make it better is obviously the crew being able to manage those crews so that once there is an issue, you have another crew riding standby. That's mandatory, though. You will always have a crew standby. So being able to be flexible, and what has made it so obvious, too, is management of these issues. Because when there's, an e when there's a delay, they don't advise, they don't communicate. OK, this is the reason. Not going mm -hmm. into too many details. Mm -hmm. This is the reason. This is when you're expected to take off, because you have your plans. And then this is the alternative. So with that alternative, you're able to make your own plans. Either you find an alternative airline, or you get your refund. Or they actually make some provision for some customer service. Well, you finally go to the counter and say, oh, we're sorry, sir. Or there's no manager to handle that issue. Mm -hmm. So that's what really makes it real front border and a real customer service issue. Mm -hmm. But government on its part, on, I would say, there's a customer protection department within the NCAA. They, they have counters at every airport. How much of this is being optimized is another challenge because people don't see that anything will be done. It brought down the report anyway. Yes. Mm. Okay. Now, the, the w w Nigerians have complained from within and even uh, international flights that come in, services sometimes, treatment sometimes, and all of that. But when flights are delayed, what compensation is the uh, 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 passenger entitled to? Or maybe even cancelled? Because they, they, certainly mm -hmm. there has to be a range. If mm -hmm. it's delayed for two hours, mm -hmm. if it's delayed for five hours, or it's delayed for a whole day, or maybe it's cancelled or something. What is the passenger entitled to? Interestingly, there are rules that, like, like I said earlier, aviation is a global uh, business. Yeah. ICAO, which is the International Civil Aviation Organization, mm -hmm. does mandate for an hour delay, a two hour delay, three, four, subsequently even a delay. Okay. And technical issue, you, you, after it's delayed for uh, sometimes, you communicate, you give refreshments. Delay, you give a certain time, you give either alternate uh, tickets. That, that's why it's always good to have a, an alliance of synergy, You're able to actually put those uh, air, air passengers okay. who choose to on another airline. And uh, thirdly, you already have the option of actually having hotels or refund. So with that, that actually suits the customer, and you're not just taking the customer for granted. And it seems that uh, a lot of the operations are shrouded in secrecy, and that is why it seems to be difficult for airlines or even the aviation sector in general to come out to, you know, to give reasons, which many customers would have uh, maybe believed. Instead, they, they prefer not to say anything, just to say that flights are delayed. Because there have been incidents whereby we hear that the same flight that would pick people from Lagos would, be, would still be in Abuja, and yeah. people would just be stranded in Lagos waiting for the same aircraft. That's what I, I, I don't think it's shrouded in secrecy. It's just a customer service perspective of operating business in Nigeria, whereby the customer is not treated as king. That's what I think is the issue. Hmm. Because when you actually tell the customer, this is the issue, and this is a solution, not just I'm sorry, sir. Mm. Because I'm sorry, sir, doesn't, what are you doing about this issue and how can we solve it really helps the customer to understand the, the issues they're dealing with at that point. Okay. Uh, let's put you on hold and uh, go for the news well, and then we come uh, back. We'll let him go now because of yeah, okay. all that stuff we have oh, packed. Oh, <laughs> all right. Let, let, let's, let's leave you to go now. Yes. Tayo Juri, uh, aviation consultant, thank you so much for coming. Thank you for coming. You've on time. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.